All right, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And this is gonna be a little bit of a different video than what you guys and gals are used to. This is my first impressions of the LG V30. Now, <clears throat> if y'all check out the community tab on YouTube, I was actually working on a versus slash comparison video between the A2 Lite and the E4 Plus. Now, I was actually approached about a trade deal for the A2 Lite for the V30, and I figured I was really missing my LG device, so I figured why not pick up the V30, you know? So we traded devices, and now I have a V30 in-house, and we're gonna do some videos on it for you guys and gals. But that being said, before we dive into my first impressions, because I've literally had this device for almost 24 hours, so it's all set up, and I have it exactly set up the way that I'm going to use it. But before we d dive into that first impressions, I just want to go ahead and go over some full disclosure for you guys. Now, this was traded. I traded my A2 Lite for this, but this device is locked. Now, it's, um, it's locked. T-Mobile. Now I can get it unlocked, but honestly, I wasn't really trying to go through all of the headache. Now I did try to put my uh, TextNow T-Mobile SIM in it, and it didn't. It didn't just activate right away. So I do have to go through the unlocking process to get this device to be fully functional. But honestly, I don't want to have to go through that headache. So. When I do my coverage on this device, it's going to be used as a Wi-Fi only device. So when I talk about the call quality and the data performance, it's going to be strictly based off of using Wi-Fi as the backbone. So I'm not really going to do any cellular coverage on this device. That being said, that shouldn't be an issue and honestly I can't remember the last time that I reviewed a device using just Wi-Fi only. I think the last time I did that was way back when I first started the channel. So it's going to be interesting, but I think I can do it. So I just wanted to give y'all that little disclaimer. So when the uh, review process rolls around, y'all are going to notice some noticeable differences here. Because one thing, if you're running your device just on Wi-Fi, you're actually going to end up with a little bit better battery life so the battery life on this should be about head and shoulders better than what it would typically be if i was using wi-fi and data together but i just wanted to let y'all know that being said let's get into these first impressions now starting off i gotta tell you guys that this device looks awesome now it pretty much was in a case for the majority of its life and I didn't actually clean out the case but I just set up the device and I'm like man okay let's get this video done so it's kind of dirty right now but I gotta tell you guys the design on this is awesome okay feels really really good in the hands and those rounded corners with that more flat-ish display I'm really a big fan of flat displays so this is really really nice but for those of you who didn't know, let's walk around the device here. So on the bottom, we have our primary microphone, we have our USB Type-C port, and then we got our primary bottom firing speaker, okay? Across the side here, this is your SIM card tray, which also houses a micro SD card. So really, really good stuff there. On this side over here, we have our volume rockers up and down, and our antenna bands, okay? Across the top, we have a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, headphone jack, and a secondary noise canceling microphone, okay? Across the back here, we have a dual camera setup. Now, this is what LG devices are known for right here. And LG actually, actually pioneered the dual camera setup. So we have one primary 13 megapixel sensor, and then we have one secondary wide angle 16 megapixel sensor. Then we have our laser autofocus and our flash, 
and our fingerprint sensor, which also doubles as our power button as well. So I can press it and light up the screen or I can just tap and unlock the device. Really, really good stuff. Now, diving a little bit deeper into the first impressions. Now this is a four gigabyte of RAM device. So particularly with this model, we have four gigs of onboard RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage, which again can be supplemented by a micro SD card. Now, if y'all want to um, bump that up a little bit, you can always go with the V30 Plus, and that doubles the storage from 64 to 128, and you still get the four gigs of RAM. Another neat thing about this device is that it does have the quad DAC inside, it also does support fast charging. I think it's Quick Charge 3.0 on this bad boy. Now, when I do the full review, I'll have everything ironed out in stone for you guys and gals. Again, this is just a first, first impressions video, so if I make some mistakes, please forgive me. But it does have Quick Charge on it. I believe it's Quick Charge 3.0. It is running an older Snapdragon processor, okay? It has a 3300 milliamp hour battery. On board, it is IP67 waterproof, so I can fully submerge it in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes. That's really, really hot. It is also mil spec 810G, so technically, it should be able to stand up to some really good drops, but nah, we ain't playing that. With these all glass devices, you better case up and you better case up quick. As a matter of fact, Nah, nah, I already showed y'all a device. We, we throwing the case on it ASAP, ASAP. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chow. And of course, pushing all types of buttons. Let's close that out. <clears throat> so yeah, this bad boy should be super durable. And this right here is definitely a flagship device. Now, diving a little bit deeper into the first impressions, I've already set everything up. Now, out of the box, this device doesn't come with an app drawer. I had to go into the settings and enable the app drawer. But there is an ability to enable the app drawer on all LG devices. And you can see I've already customized the button layout across the bottom. So I added a quick notification pull down here. And I've rearranged the buttons because I've gotten used to the style of button layout on the Samsung Galaxy S8. And another neat thing is you can also add a quick screenshot button right there. So I went ahead and did that. Other than that, it's laid out exactly how the setup for all of my other devices are. It does, however, have some differences here. So with LG devices, their folder style is a little bit paginated. So even with all my apps in here, you can only fit a certain amount on each paginated panel before it slides over to the next one. So that is a little bit of a downside because I'm just used to them, you know, adding downwards. So I shouldn't really have to do this extra swipe over, but it is what it is. You guys know when I pick up devices, I tend to stick with the stock software through the review period and then I load up um, software that I'm comfortable with. But for the full review process, and through the full review, we're going to use LG's uh, primary software. So this is exactly how LG expects you to use your device. But there is that. Okay. And yeah, so far so good. Now I've already set everything up. And just so I can see how much storage we're rocking with here. Let me just show you real fast. If I dive into the file manager and I back up one step. So this does verify that it is a 64 gigabyte device. And out of that, you can see I have 42 gigabytes free, 42.60. And that's after I loaded up all of my apps. Now, aside from the LG stock apps that came on this device, I say I loaded up about 88 apps aside from that. And then I went ahead and I threw in a 120 gigabyte card. All right. Now, one thing that I do have to point out and is something that I don't like with these uh, fully customized Android devices is that 
you don't have the ability um, directly out of the box to make your SD card internal storage on your device. Out of the box is set up to be portable storage. Now, when you launch your camera, however, you will get a notification when you install the SD card, it's going to recognize, oh, an SD card was installed and give you the ability to save your videos and photos there. But out of the box, you can't just dive into the regular Android settings and make your SD card internal storage. In order to do that, you have to get into the developer options and you have to force the software to make the SD card internal storage. That's only with these fully customized devices. So anything like LG skin is fully customized. Um, Samsung skin is fully customized. Anything that's fully customized like that, then you have to jump through a few extra hoops to get the SD card as internal storage. But for the purposes of this video and through the whole review process, the SD card that I have in here is set up as portable storage. But yeah. Um, 24 hours with the device, just about, I have to say that it's really, really good. It's been really smooth, and I've had almost no issues, all right? And I'd say the biggest reason why I did the trade for this device would have to be the cameras. Now, one of the things that I really enjoyed about my G6 was the wide-angle camera on the rear. And I was actually considering getting another G6 because I wanted to take advantage of that wide-angle camera. I was actually going to get another uh, G6 Plus. All right? But, as I said, the opportunity to get this device came up, and I figured, why not? So after the review process is done, this, along with the S8, will be my primary recording and video production devices for the channel moving forward. Anyway. That pretty much does it for this first impressions video. Now, the full review for this one should take me about a month to do. We're gonna go ahead and go through everything like we always do. And I'm gonna have a separate dedicated camera video with a camera interface walkthrough, photo and video samples, so on and so forth. We're gonna go through the versus videos, all that good stuff. So by, by the time I'm done, with my coverage on this device, hopefully you guys and gals would know or should know everything that you want to know when you're just trying to decide, should I pick this device up still, even in 2019? And honestly, I got to tell you off the bat, for, uh, before we even get to the full review, um, one of the things that I don't like about LG devices is the fact that they come out with a few different variations. Now, I've said this before in, in some of my other videos, and it bears repeating here. If you're looking at an LG device, I would always recommend you go with the plus variant of said LG device, okay? Because the plus variant is the way LG intended for their device to be. All right, so whether you're looking at the V30, the V35, the V40, uh, the G6, the G7, even the new G8 that just came out, you should also consider the plus variants of those devices. And I would almost recommend the plus variants of LG devices over any other variant of LG devices, okay? This is why... Uh, for things like my Stylo 3 video, I recommend you went with the Stylo 3 Plus. And even in my older LG videos like the G6 uh, review, I, I also recommended that you just go ahead and go with the LG G6 Plus. Because the Plus variants have everything that the regular variants have and more. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make that recommendation already before we even get to the full review. If you're looking at uh, potentially picking up LG products, always go with the plus variants. Okay, I'm done. We off the soapbox now. That being said, as I said, this full review should take me about a month to do. 
As always, if you guys and gals enjoyed this video and or found it helpful, please help your buddy out and give the video a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You don't know how much. If you'd like to see more content like this, also feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and click off the notification bell icon right next to it so you guys and gals get notified when I publish new videos. That being said, if this, uh, this first impressions video, almost said unboxing there, piqued your interest and you guys and gals would like to know where you can pick up this device as well as the few recommended cases, micro SD card, screen protector, all that good stuff will be linked up down below in the video description. So if this video piqued your interest, interest is piqued, down below in the video description should be like a one stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. This whole video was recorded using the rare facing 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8. All the audio for this video was recorded using the Comica V30 Lite shotgun style microphone. So please let me know what you think of the overall video quality down below in the comments. Also let me know what you think of the overall audio quality down below in the comments as well. And quick question. If you own a V30, what is something that you enjoy about your V30? And what is something that you dislike about your V30 as well? Let's have that discussion down below in the comments. I'll meet you guys and gals down there. And as always, let's try and be respectful down below in the comments. We're all entitled to our own opinions and we all need to respect that. Anyways, have a good one everybody and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.